Welcome back to the Bronx Aerosol Arts Documentary Project. Today is March 23rd, 2022. My name is Stephen Payne, librarian and archivist at the Bronx County Historical Society. And uh, we're here again with staff 161. Uh, and Kurt Boone is also here. Yep. And, uh, and we're looking forward to everything that staff will share with us today. And picking up from last time, um, we're going to start off by showing uh, a photo of an original membership card of the Ebony Dupes. Let's, there we go. And staff, you want to talk a little bit about this particular card? Okay. So that that particular card was uh, um, was uh, is the is the property of Vam. Vam was uh, part of our uptown uh, 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 division of or no uh, uh, part of the Ebony Dukes crew. Uh, um, so Vam, I, I was surprised that Vam kept that from the early seventies. So what it is is an index card, right? I used to uh, um, get these index cards from the Woolworth, which was on uh, Prospect Avenue, sure. right? Um, uh, and um, I would um, get um, markers, you know, uh, 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 color markers, and and um, let's fill it out like that. And it says, this is to certify that VAM is an official member of the Ebony Dukes Graffiti Club. Uh, organization and signed staff 161 so I got um, which is uh, always our, our general symbol was a spray can with a peace symbol on it mm. and then I got the little El Marco logo there as well so that's uh, the um, the membership card um, which which uh, the Ebony Dukes crew um, were we first initiated that 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 membership card um, deviating from the, the identifying thing of of like gang colors, yeah, with yeah. the um, um den cut sleeve denim jackets with the uh, top rocker, bottom rocker, and the center patch thing, yeah, right. Um, like I was mentioning um, on on the, on the previous uh, interview that um, a good the first. The first uh, uh, pioneering um, or founding members of, of, of the crew came from um, street gangs that were in the Fort Apache section of the South Bronx. All on Hewitt Place, right? And basically, we were all living on Hewitt Place, which is where I was living in, in the early 70s, late 60s, early 70s. And so, so membership cars, I was an Ebony Duke official membership card so we kind of more or less revamped that i you know i did yeah. well and um basically i just get them um printed out and and um and sealed as a permanent card now but um wow, that's wow. why you know as part of being a member of the crew um i just had the, um, the motivation to like give someone a membership card yeah as yeah. You know, to certify that they were part of that group, especially when it started to um, to grow outside of the neighborhood mm -hmm. that I, I was in, and people would would see uh, some of the, the founding members that didn't know that they had that 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 person had met me and I had put them in the crew, and so and they was and they you know. It was like the unbelievable. Oh, now, how do you part it? I have need to, you know? yeah, yeah. And, and and they were showing that. See, that staff gave me that card. Yeah, and nice. So, yeah. Was, was there a, a whole process as far as how people became members? Or pretty much if you dug someone. No, I see. That's the thing. See, a lot of people have have um, written things or surmised that that because of the the gang affiliation, right? Yeah. Um, they kind of more or less um, assumed that. Um, that the same process or, 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 or initiating process that most people got into the street gangs in the South Bronx was the same initiating process that the Ebony Dukes used. And the, the whole uh, uh, motivation and inspiration for, for, for being a, a graffiti crew was to get away from the whole street gang thing. Mm -hmm. So no, we didn't. We didn't um, put people through a gauntlet, you know, or sure. nothing like that, sure. or or send them on any particular mission to do anything 
that was, you know, other than graffiti writing. So my my thing was more or less if I saw your tag, I saw your tag, and up meaning that it was you know uh, prominent either on the trains or in, on on walls in, in, in the city. Um, I more or less basically gave you the benefit of the doubt that you was a writer, right? See. The whole thing with the whole thing with the uh, early writing era was that it was just more than just tagging your name. It was the fact that that you had to be rocking spray paint. Yeah. So it was like more or less. I I I assumed that if I saw your name up, that you was like a racking person or basically a, a street urchin person, based you know, and and you had that heart yeah, yeah, that yeah. I was looking for as part of the crew members. Yeah, because there's no yeah. other way that you get that much spray paint unless you unless you erect erect it. it yeah. yeah, so that's what that was the uh, uh, the normal process to acquire spray paint at that time. Because you gotta understand that the early pioneers it was between the ages of eight and sixteen. Yeah. You had very few uh, um, people who were outside of that that range. The age range for writers. Um, uh, one was um, Stay High 149, I believe. He was a little older, right? Um, and the reason that being between the ages of 8 and 16, because of how the, um, the laws were back then. Under 16 years old, back in the early 70s, he was considered a minor. Yeah. And um, if you was apprehended tagging or uh, anything else uh, um, uh, boosting spray paint or whatever sure all right uh, racking you 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 wouldn't really you know um, wind up with like a, a, a criminal record or anything like that you they or you would they wouldn't really be too much of a punishment other than they will call your parents or, or you know your guardians or whoever legal guardians and says listen we have so and so here at the precinct, and he's he's been getting into some mischief, and you gotta come and get him. Right. Yeah. Worst case scenario, during that time, was that if you got pinched a lot of times, and you became, um, you know, uh, um, uh, noticed by the family court, or a family court case was brought against you, which is juvenile court basically, um, then. You can wind up with community service as a punishment, where you have to go and clean some some um, graph writing or on a wall or something. Yeah. That was the the most significant thing. Now, the under sixteen factor was that you know you wasn't going to go to Rackets Island. Yeah. Well, yeah. did they uh, during that time everybody was going to Spofford first? Did you? Well, your yeah, Spofford was there. So Spofford was the juvenile uh, facility over in the Hunts Point area of the Bronx. So Spofford was kind of more or less uh, the dreaded place to go as well. And, and, and in a lot of respects, it was just as bad. But unbeknownst to us, that was between the ages of 8 and 16, right? It, it you know, it didn't overshadow um, the uh, the dread of, of riding up on Rackers right. Island, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Being that you're 16 and over, they had a low, they had a facility on Rackers Island that was for kids 16 and older, and <laughs> there was a lot of stories going around about being there and going there. So to avoid that, we had like a cut off. Most writers, early the, the founding writers, actually cut off at 16. A lot of them. Yeah, <laughs> I know, I know. yeah that's, that was the reason yeah. people think, oh, they just, oh, they just stopped. They, no, because we wanted to avoid Rackets Island, Absolutely. right? Because yeah. now there's been a lot of writers, right? You know, a few writers mostly, right? That avoided apprehension either from racking paint or actually getting busted tagging. Yeah. Right. Um. But the vast majority, if you was an active tagger or you was racking uh, uh, spray paint and other stuff, you know, basically shoplifting, right? 
um, it was just a matter of time before you got apprehended some kind of way. Yeah, yeah. All right? Um, some were fortunate and was able to escape that. But if you was full force into it, um, it was just a matter of time um, that you, you would be apprehended some kind of way. Um, so with that thought or, or that understanding, it was just the the, uh, the protocol that, listen, 16 years old is retirement time for a writer back then. Yeah. 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 Now, I went to 17, yeah. which was in 75, early 75. I stopped tagging, at being an active tagger, all right? And um, as a result of that, as a result of that, um, to this day, right, you can find an entry on my rap sheet, right, that has to deal with tagging. Okay. Ah, uh, I see. All right? Since you went to 17. That's right. Why, huh? Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. again, that's the main reason, right, that you've seen a lot of writers backed off, you know, early on um, because they got to that age yeah. where it, it was retirement for, for, for active tagging. Yeah. So just a quick question on SpaFit. You know, I've talked to a lot of writers. Nobody talks about SpaFit. You know, and you know, in Queens, when I was growing up, SpaFit was a, a regular, but where the fuck was he? He was either, you know, gang members or doing stick-ups at 14 or 15, end up in SpaFit. But very few writers talk about that yeah. in our facility. You know? Well, it, there was quite a few, you know, uh, 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 prominent uh, uh, writers graffiti taggers that wound up at Rackers Island. Not necessarily um, for graffiti per se, but um, it was mainly for maybe the um, the things that centered around graffiti writing also. Sure. Um, you know, the reality of graffiti writing is that um, um, it is a, 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 um, a crime by penal code. Um, it, it is the it is vandalism and defacement of property according to New York State law. Sure. And uh, we were aware of that. And in general, uh, uh, graffiti writing, right? Tagging, it is it's a it's a it's an outlaw culture activity, Absolutely. underground outlaw culture activity. Um, it's just of of the current generations that it's be, it's become this art form thing, right? Um, associated with the art that. world, yeah. but um, tagging. Um, graffiti writing is by penal code in New York State law, and just about anywhere else is considered vandalism, defacement of property, and the charge um, can be upgraded to the felony level. Mm. Right? Um, it generally wasn't done like that back in the, um, in the early 70s, um, but they can get charges enough to um, hold you in custody. And if you was um, 16 and under, that that was um, possibly um, Spofford Juvenile Center, which is located in Hunts Point section of the Bronx. Now, um, to show you the disparity, I wound up, and, and my brother AJ wound up in Spofford mm -hmm. um, on occasion. And just to show you um, um, the disparity between the, um, or you know, the differences between the charges that a, a, a kid, a particular kid, might have being as profit. Yeah. Um, um, a person who's known as the state's most dangerous inmate. Now, Willie Bosket, right? Um, I'm at, I'm at um, Spofford, right? 
I'm at Spofford, in, uh, basically in the same housing area, right, as Willie Boskett, who's being held there on a homicide charge. Wow. Right, in, in the subway. In the subway, right. Yeah, yeah he's, he, most of his, um, his uh, uh, um, particular crimes happened in the subway system. And um, and uh, basically a murder robbery. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. So you had, you know, a kid that might have had been there for basically shoplifting, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And usually, that happened, right? Uh, while you was while the kid was there, is because the parent decided they wasn't going to come to the precinct and pick them up. Because generally, if the charges wasn't that serious, like tagging, graffiti writing, right, or uh, shoplifting, then usually the kid will be turned over to the custody of their parents at the precinct and given, if anything, a uh, uh, desk appearance, um, a ticket to appear in family court, not in criminal court, hmm. in family court. But if no one came to claim the kid, yeah. right? Um, the, the kid would wind up in, um, in Spofford, right? Uh, until the parent, you know, they'll put a, a, a notice to the parent to come, or if, um, to come to come to family court, you know, to appear in family court for the kid. And if the, if the parent was reluctant, they'll get a subpoena, of course. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, to come to family court. Um, so it was a few times. My mother, being a single parent, um, uh, worked out in Queens, in the story of Queens, Queens. right? And um, so a lot of times um, they were, um, if me and AJ happened to get into something uh, apprehended because of, of, of tagging or, or, or racking or whatever and or we got all or what another charge was uh, uh criminal trespassing being on the tracks <sighs> the train tracks or in the train yard mm -hmm. or in the train tunnel that's criminal trespass there's a few charges that came up yeah. um uh, criminal trespass right um uh, uh defacement of property vandalism uh, um shoplifting uh um criminal mischief mm. in general right so those are charges that's you know it's a multitude of charges they could have hit you with just for from being a, a tagger yeah so um again if you was apprehended and, and like a few times me and AJ were and my mother wasn't available because she was uh um, basically living in with a family um in Astoria Queens that she was like a nanny there Right, right, right. So she couldn't just like leave, and and just come to the precinct I immediately like that. Yeah, yeah. Right. So uh, basically, she warned us ahead of time: if you get in into something, I'm gonna be able to come and get you. Okay. Right. Oh, so, yeah. right. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so we are. Uh, uh, that's our early experience with yeah. with Spofford. And I'm, and I'm sure y'all weren't the only ones who had parents who were working and you know couldn't just. Yeah, well, it was the whole thing is that, you know, the whole thing, even if they wasn't working and they wanted to teach you a lesson, they just said, I'm not coming to get them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? And, until the court subpoenaed the parents. You, you got to come to court on a yeah. certain day yeah. to see about this kid yeah. or we're going to charge you. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. So that's what it, because again, now, you know, you have people of various ages that are into um, the whole thing. With, with, with graffiti writing, so to speak, right? Or writers, they call themselves writers. But um, today, but the thing is, uh, back then, that's what we were writers, that's what we refer to ourselves as writers. But the general term graffiti has become common, right? Um, so you have a lot of people that's into graffiti for various reasons now, but there was base, based, basically one reason at that time, right? And, um, there are various ages too now, but just to, um, to put it in uh, in perspective, that initially it was between the ages of eight 
and 16. 16 was the cutoff. So basically, it was a, a youth movement, basically. Initially, that's what it was all about. And, you know, it's become other things now. Um, but um, that's what it was. <laughs> so, so, okay, so in the early 70s, you got the club. You have the uh, name card. So you're, you're tagging. And, and now, you know, it's it didn't become an art form yet. But what, when did you just decide to, like, okay, I'm going to up my style and do a character? How, how did the character experience develop in him? You know, obviously the creation of the Grim Reaper, which is a famous piece by you. But how did the the character thing from from Black Book yeah. to the train? Did it, <laughs> okay, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. Um, okay, so um, if you talk to um, any of the pioneers, early um, signature era pioneers, mm -hmm. and um, writing, tagging, um, the, the early Joe 182s and um, the Tacky 183s and Frank 207 and Turok 161, these early Broadway guys. And basically, um, the, 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 um, the, be, the be just for the beginning stages of it, um, um, that's where it started to proliferate in New York City early on around that those Broadway writers. Earlier we call them Broadway writers, but upper 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 Manhattan, Washington Heights area. Yeah. A lot of those writers come from. Um those writers will tell you that the, the um they they weren't you know looking at themselves as artists at that time. Sure. The art thing came a little well, a long ways after. Um some of the taggers, right? Some of the taggers, as myself, had a, a natural a natural propensity to draw things, right? When I say draw things, I I I, I had um a natural talent to sketch sketch things, right? Oh, wow. And so I, I would sketch stuff, you know, with letters. Wow. Yeah, I would sketch stuff. This is a black book That's entry. Amazing. So I would sketch things with letters early on, and um, and, and, and um, and I was known for sketching things, right? Um, in my neighborhood, um, a couple of things was happening, um, as childhood um activities. One of them being um flying, flying kites on the roof. Yeah, yeah. yeah. With, um, yeah. With, uh, uh, five story tenements, a row, row of five story tenements that uh, encompassed the whole block of Hewitt Place. And on top of those, the roofs of those tenements, you know, I, I, would, uh, I would draw things. I would, I would draw things up on the roof, but I would also design people's kites, right? So I, I, I always was able to sketch things. Now, when spray paint came around, right, um, I, uh, I just... You know, from writing with the can, tagging with it, I just got into yeah. actual drawing images with with the with can, the yeah. with the spray paint. And I and I believe I mentioned earlier that um, one of the the images that I I, I um I sketched was uh, um skull and crossbones. Yeah, yeah. Right. And hippie hippie got a uh... yeah. So a hippie who was a member of the the young savage skulls yeah. took offense to that, but uh, again, um, one of the things, uh, images. See, um, most artists draw what they see, um, and what they see, they're inspired by to to, to draw. Yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, same with me. So I, I saw a lot of um, art that was on the back of cut sleeve. Uh, denim jackets, which was gang colors, yeah, yeah. and I, I took it like that. That's you know, I, you know, it's a gang color, but it's 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 an interesting gang color, you know. Uh -huh. wow. So the Grim Reaper color. So so one of the gangs was the the Reapers, right? Yeah, wow. Right, sure. and um, so I kind of took to that image right away, wow. and I started drawing that. 
Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. And along with skull and crossbones, which was a, a savage skull yeah. image, right? And um, so, so drawing with, with the spray can, right? Um, which is um, what we refer to as, as can control, right? Can control, you know. So these are old <laughs> black book that. images, right? Yeah. So, again. Um, you drew these in the 70s? Um, well, well, some of them is recent. Some of them is 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 early seventies. Wow. Yeah, okay. yeah, it's an old book. Yeah, yeah, it's, 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 it's an old book. <laughs> yeah, I gotta yeah, 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 get some yeah, yeah, binding yeah. on it. Yeah, it's an old book. Wow, uh -huh. it's an book. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, so drawing with this with the spray can, um, I started that on the street. Um, there was um this large um building again across the street I mentioned earlier that was um had this huge wall um remember the the tenements were on average five stories high yeah this um building across the street which was you know owned by this big i believe pentecostal church mm -hmm. right uh, it was a huge building that ran from uh, uh westchester avenue to where 161st street and in intersected um hewitt place and um the building had to be at least three stories high. Ah, uh, okay. Right? And there was this this big brick wall that was there. And eventually that brick wall started to get the tags of the the writers or graffiti tags that were in the neighborhood, including mines. And basically that's where I started like drawing things with spray paint. On, on that wall there. Mm -hmm. And that's where I did that skull and crossbones uh, with the dripping bones and, and the crown that um, uh, that the Sabbath Skull member Hippie took offense uh, to. Took offense. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. yeah, so I'll uh, join with the can. Yeah. Right? A, a lot of people see it now and they see like the murals and stuff and, and they believe that it's um, with street art, street art, street art yeah. right? And they believe that that's something that was learned in art school. Now that that actual drawing with the can came from the basically the street, and I'm like one of the early proponents of of drawing images with the can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right now, the general, the general stylistic uh, style to me when it when when it's mentioned in um the the writer's world, graffiti world, uh, I, I kind of more or less, um, you know, uh, connect that to art. When you say style, sure. it has a little more meaning than, than art as far, but it's generally, they, they mean my art, my art form, my form of art, my way I do art. The way you do it. Right? Yeah. And uh, it's usually connected to letter form. So, um, by after the first masterpieces started to appear in 1972, Super Cool being the early proponent of that, right? Doing, this was letters, big letters. Yeah, right? well, actual outlined um, letter fonts. The fonts, yeah, yeah. Letter fonts, right? Um, more or less in a bubble letter style. Sure. Right? That I adopted. Oh. Right? Um, uh, certain writers started to, by the following year or the following months after, started to initiate their own font or letter style. One of the more prominent ones that started to, to twist or, or, sh or reshape the letter fonts, which, you know, most of us, and Tracy 168 and then later on, uh, uh, Riff 170 and, and others started to, uh, to, to re reshape the letter fonts, which people generally now know as wild style letters or sure. wild style letter font. Sure. You know? So um, that's when the, the more artistic um, focus started to take effect. But I, I, I put on record that initially my motivation wasn't art. I, I I was known as the kid that could draw and these and put a 
a, a, a Jolly Roger on your kite or, or put flames on your go-kart and or or to to um to paint gang colors. I I was known for that. Yeah. Now and then when I started to use spray paint, it wasn't necessarily for art reason or, or art recognition thing. It was more or less to bring attention to my tag. Yeah, 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 yeah. Basically, I was decorating my tags on my tag. Because at, 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 by the mid-70s, right, um, even early 70s, right, it started to be a little more, even because in the signature, before pieces came, it, it was so many writers starting to, um, to, um, to pop up on walls and on the and in the subways that um, it became competitive. So you had it, it was more than just have your tag there, right? It came, how is your tag is going to stand out on this wall or on this surface amongst um, 30 other tags? Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? How, and, and so the style factor came in uh, or how your tag was embellished. And I, my thing was embellishing the tag, you know? Um, stripes and polka dots, multiple colors, clouds, or to draw something with the tag. Yeah. So that was the general motivation with that. And most of that I got from pop culture. The bubble letter thing it, it, is not unique. It, it's from pop culture. You've seen it in comic books oh, yeah. and, and in, in uh, 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 syndicated cartoons on television and in other publications, advertising advertisements and stuff in, in the city, you know, yeah. bubble letters, you know, and, um, the more, the more, uh, customized, uh, graph, graph writing font would be, um, um, the wild style thing. That's more unique in a sense, you know, but sure. all of that comes from, you know, and a lot of people think that it's like some new invention. And, and, and all, all, all of that comes from the signature, the signature um, factor as well, because um, the signature um, had the arrows and the twists and, and the appendages that you see with the uh, succeeding um, larger um letter fonts yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah it's the same thing you know um all that comes from the early signature font yeah right the signature uh um uh, writing right the signature writing introduced the um the early um letter or bubble letter fonts that most writers are into you know um for instance this is a a uh, King Koo, King Koo 156 um, piece, right? Early, early masterpiece, right? And if you look at the letters, the letters are emulating the the, the tag. Yeah, 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 yeah. The the um the uh, bubble letter type font that you see there is emulating the way that he wrote his signature tag, the same style of his signature tag with like, say for instance, how um, that L would loop over like that or what the K would loop over like that and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. Those, it's just emulating. Everything comes from the signature error. Yeah. Right? So if, if you're gonna get into uh, the study uh, 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 on the history of graffiti, right? You got to go back to the signature era and look at how those signature era tags um, developed over time, started and developed, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So, so, that, so, so that tag that the New York Times caught with Taki 183 was just an early way of writing, right? Yeah, it was very simplistic. Very simplistic. Yeah. Very simplistic. Uh, Say, for instance, I, I got a, a Spencer 1 tag here. Look at Spencer's. This, okay. Now, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, the thing with Spencer, Spencer um, <clears throat> caught a lot of um, uh, prison time early on. So he started his thing in, in early 70s, right? 
and he's a, he's first generation signature writer right here. Mm. Yeah. Spencer, yeah. And um and he went on to the um doing pieces on the seven line and he's one of the um the early um uh Harlem writers that left out of the um the two and the five and the six train and went over to the seven seven line and uh. we kinda like done. So Spencer one. Now look how his signature is. All right, it's not a common signature. You know, look how it, the style in his S and 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 and, and, and uh, the P and the E. Right, this is an early signature, Spencer one signature yeah. here. And it's so, amazing, and the character. And yeah, the yeah, he was known for doing that type of profile. Profile characters became a, a prolific thing at that time with, yeah. with characters early on too. So you, but you, and you, uh, if I'm listening to it right. Uh, the characters were a way of highlighting the signature, and not really, as, well. Not, well, not yeah, as, as, as my no. So here's a Sp here's a Spencer piece, right? Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, that's yeah, that's yeah, that's yeah, a yeah. that's one of his 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 pieces that he's done. You know, got uh, uh, got rest his soul. He's he passed away actually in prison, mm. right? Um, you know, so yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. So that's one of his, and that's one of his train pieces there. See his train piece. Oh. Okay, okay, yeah, that's yeah, a train yeah, yeah. piece by him. Yeah. Wow. Spencer one, you know? Yeah. Wow. So that er, early signature uh era pioneer, you know? He was an Emily Duke member. Um no, he was actually ex Vandals, right? Oh. Uh, yeah, yeah. Spencer was the ex Vandals. But um uh he was uh, um he moved around a lot, right? He was one of the first um Members, uh, 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 well, not really, really the first, but one of the first of uh, the ex Vandal members that used to come around our neighborhood on Hewitt Place and hang out with us over there. Um, and uh, yeah, so he was known for um, his, his uh, early contributions. For so, so here's some of the early characters. Right, that I kind of more got. That's that skull and crossbone uh, skull and character, crossbone. Yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Horse head, and and I got uh, my Corky uh, character here. So uh, the Corky tag I used to write C O R K Y, sure. and that would be my Mr. Ed character, yes, the horse, Ed, yeah, yeah. and um, the Staff One Six One character, right. which was I I call uh, B Boney, which was the skull and crossbones with the crown and the dripping bones. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so the bending letter thing, right? Okay, so here's the representation, right? So here, here we got my bubble letter style, yeah. right? That's my bubble letter style, right? right? And there, I, this one, when you, when you, you, know, you know, if I wanted to bend the letters, sure. I, I, I would bend the letters similar to that, right? So interwoven letters, basically more of like a mechanical type of style or font, right? Um, which is, you know... Um, the custom uh, 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 graffiti art, right? Now, okay, so let me emphasize on, on that, on that, that uh, point there. Um, I believe that you have writing, writing now, writing is the active pursuit um, or writing of a tag, or handle, right? Usually, all right, it would have to be illegally, yeah. right? Um, without permission, and um, to get the tag up solely to get the tag up. When I say up, um, frequently posted around the city, any surface, apply, any, sur any surface, yeah. right? Um, what happened uh, early on? Is that uh, it was? It became uh, understood that if you put your your um, your tag on a mass transit uh, um, a vehicle, like a side of a subway car, or the interior of a subway car, um, or on a bus, or on um, a truck, that that would get your tag around the city much quicker, right? And more efficiently because the tag is not stationary now. The tag is mobile. 
So the mobile canvas came into focus. And um, that would be considered uh, uh, writing, the writing, or graffiti writing. Now, graffiti art is something different. If you if you're doing if you're doing uh, if you're doing uh, 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 graffiti fonts solely for the aesthetic of it, how it looks or the shape of it, that's for art reason. Yeah, that's you know to me that's for art reason. I, I can understand. I'm I'm into art. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm into art, so um, I understand that. But I also understand the fact that that's different from this putting your tag up, what they commonly known as bombing now. Yeah, yeah. Right? So, um, um, I think that's become misconstrued o o over the decades that tagging up, getting your name around writing is, is different from graffiti art. Now, someone that has a history of writing on um, street level, the underground thing, mm -hmm. activity, um, has credibility as a writer. Once you get up, you, you've been up and you have a record of that. All right. And you you can go on to be a graffiti artist. I, I, well, I don't tag the streets no more. I just do stuff in on canvas or on legal walls or whatever. You, you're still considered, you know, historically a, a writer. You know, I mean, you just do a graffiti art now. Uh, so it to me it's two different things, yeah. right? Um, and I think the record kind of more or less uh, proves that even to this day, because you have two aspects going on now. You have the bombers that's on the street, mm -hmm. and, and then you have people who who um, go to somebody and ask, "Can I paint on this wall? Here's my portfolio. This is what I do, and um, can I paint this wall?" That's different from the guy who's who's put or the girl, right? There's a lot of females in this too, who's putting their tag up and taking that's 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 the grassroots writing to me. Yeah, yeah. Right, where you're putting your tag up, and and your, um, the only props you get from that is um, basically the frequency of your tag around, um, which they call all city. You know. Yeah. Yo, that's a community thing. It's not like. I've hung around some artists and they'll they see a tag on the wall and you say, oh, yeah, I know that guy, but for, for me, I don't I don't know that tag. So, I mean, you have to be kind of like in the community to maybe identify who's getting up well, who it, doesn't, you know? Okay, here's the, here's the thing with that, right? Um, uh, it's, it's, that's where uh, um, the aesthetic factor, um, how the, your tag looks, right? came into play in in the in in the graffiti or the writing world right um the shape or the style right or the font of your tag right for instance um uh this is a, a stay high's tag there oh, okay, okay. Yeah, 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 stay yeah. high's tag there right and yeah and so that's Butch right. and, and Ralph McDonald, and, and this is a brother uh, named Ket K E T, right? Uh, um, that it, they're at the um, Graffiti, Hall of Fame. Graffiti Hall of Fame, right? And so the shape or the aesthetic of, of Stehai's tag, along with that early signature signature. Uh, signature era had had characters too, as I mentioned before. People like Sweet Duke, and, and even Phase too. He had a little character. I think it was a profile character. He used to write with CAD, C A D, mm -hmm. right? Um, um, so signature era had characters too. So the uh, aesthetic of Stay High's um, signature era tag um, made his tag stand out. Yeah, yeah. All right. So that that was um, that came into play a lot. Did Stay High do that, do that one? Yeah, he, he drew that. Oh, he yeah, yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Original. Yep. Original uh huh. Stay yep. Mm hmm. That's my first time seeing him. Mm hmm. Yep. And so. Do you have a case two in there? Case. Case uh, two. I don't have any case two. Yeah. Um. Uh. <laughs> I, I, uh. 
K Stu is the generation after me, right? I right, basically knew him, right? Um, and as one arm Jeff. One arm Jeff. Oh. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. That's the that's all. Huh? And you know, um, I wasn't even really aware of him as a as a writer, right? Yeah. He, he was not too far from my neighborhood, right? Uh, in the South Bronx, and and um. He just was known as one arm Jeff to me. I, I just didn't even grasp the fact that he was. You know, he, some people were tagging after my generation that I knew that I didn't know they were actually taggers. You know, sure. I just knew them. Sure. You know? well, well, Bush was out there at twelve. Mm -hmm. <coughs> you know, so him and kids yeah. were like partners mm -hmm. <coughs> back then. But are you at the liberty to, to describe the process? Because Bush, Bush too, uh, did a process of how he would go about doing a whole car. So, he, he, he described it as a production, right? Yeah. So, how, how say, take one of your Grim Reaper whole cards, what, what, how did you prepare to do that, and what, what was the process of you doing uh, that? Okay, so, what, what again, what happened it, it, is that um, due to the proliferation of, uh, of, of tagging, um, in, in the city, because it it grew it grew, you know. You know very fast in in the early seventies, from the signature era into the early piecing era, it started to grow very very fast. Meaning that, you know, uh, uh, new writers started to appear very quickly, yeah. right? And so, um, so there was reduced space, right? Reduce space on the trains. Wow. Well, well, yeah, on the side of the trains. Yeah. Because of the um the piecing era, it took you you know, you know when you could get like 20, 20 or thirty tags on the side of a subway car. Now you had one piece there, and that is because that piece you wanted that piece to to, to stand out, you know, and um, uh, so, um, I got into the making my piece large, right? And my piece uh, uh, um, embellished to the point where it, it, it was, it stood out prominently. And AJ, my brother, was in, definitely into that. He did the, the first uh, um, large character um, pieces, which, which you know, which we know, know as a, a married couple. A married couple is doing two trains, two train cars mm -hmm. connected together. Right. So he uh, he did the first married couple where it, it was it had all jive one six one stretched across two subway cars. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Now the, <laughs> I, I, I was leery of that. Uh, yeah, yeah, I had something posted on on, on my uh, Instagram page, right. but um, uh, I was leery of that because I, I was just just you know you know I didn't have faith that it would stay together. Okay. okay. I, you know, because yeah, yeah. they take the cars and they um and they separate the cars and send them to different um other lines and stuff like that. So I I, I felt that eventually, if I did that, right, that my my two cars would get separated. And I I didn't want to see that. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, um yeah. my thing was um embellishing the tag, right, um doing um color schemes. Um, clouds uh, and and dots and stripes and, and, and um, things that were around the tag itself, yeah. putting a background behind the tag itself, and that's where I, I started drawing things like uh, giant spray cans and, and uh, other cartoon characters. A lot of the inspiration comes from cartoon characters and such like that. Sure. And um, eventually I did the Grim Reaper piece, right? Um, and the cannon piece, which a uh, stick oh, figure. cannon piece, yeah, yeah. Uh, stick figure lighting a cannon and blowing my tag out. Yeah. And such like that. And the checkerboard cloud, which I did, um, uh, I did a cloud behind the tag and it had a checkerboard uh, um, um, uh, uh, image. Uh, it's a, so uh, basically, um, more or less drawing with the can at that at that point. 
So, um, in order to do those type of uh, characters, I, I didn't, I wasn't into um, uh, uh, doing a schematic drawing and carrying it, carrying the schematic drawing into the yard, the yard or the tunnel or the layout. Yeah. Uh, because I, I thought that would be um, um, very incriminating because a lot of times you'll finish painting and stuff like that and you'll be gone and then um, you know, the police will show up and then they'll you know see you someplace else and and they'll be suspicious of you and you know uh, especially you know if you're a young kid they know it was it was young kids that were doing it yeah, yeah, right yeah, yeah. and you might get a pat down and if they find a schematic drawing of what, what's on the train. Oh, you're done. <laughs> you're done. You're done. Uh, yeah, come on. Yeah, that's I see see a lot of people like, oh, oh. See a lot of people go by pictures now, right? Yeah. Um in the early in the early era a a picture, uh see we everybody walks around with phones and stuff with, with cameras now. Um mm. you gotta understand that in the early seven early late sixties, early seventies it, you know, especially in, in poor, depressed areas like the South Bronx, you know, you know, people couldn't afford a, a, a camera. Yeah, for a sure. A camera. You got a camera? <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, um, yeah. You know, um, so um, unless you um, um, boosted the camera, shoplifted, yeah. the camera, you, you just didn't have one. And besides that, it was just a taboo thing to, to, to take pictures of... of um, your crime, yeah, yeah. Why, why, you know, in my, you know, that's I had that mindset for a while. Why are you taking pictures of something of that's evidence against you? Yeah, you know, if you have a picture of it, and if they get that picture in your possession, then you know they can say that. Oh, okay, so put two and together. That's on the train, and you have a picture of it, and so you know. But anyway, yeah. But anyway, it became a popular thing to take pictures of trains later on. It's uh. So um, yeah, but I I wasn't doing that early on, but I, I um I do I do have posse possession of some pictures, early pictures of the seventies um, pieces and stuff, you know. But those documentaries that you're in, they show the Grim Reaper on video. So some somebody else had that. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Um, I believe uh, um Blade Blade um. Um, took a picture of that train. He was the one that first took a, a photograph of that particular uh, um, car, subway and car. And then the was who took that yeah. picture. Here's a here's a, a, a blade. Here's a blade um, piece that he sent me years ago. <laughs> oh, okay. Wow. Yeah, yeah, that's blade. Yeah, yeah the cannon. Like when they showed on the video, it was a cannon piece, pretty clean. It's a good photo, Paul. Yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, Blade, um, Blade, um, and the Uptown crew members of the Ebony Dukes, um, they, they're known for acquiring some of the earliest pitches, uh, Bam and Crotchy and L and Comet and those guys. Yeah. Yeah, they, um, they, 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 um, where they were located, the, um, the two and the five train would run, right? And... During that period, those were some of the most prolific pieces, uh, early pieces of, of uh, graffiti writing um, in, in the city. Yeah. So um, they got a lot of good pictures of, of the early works, you know. Mm. And, and yeah. that, those are the lines that you you painted on most of the time. Well, yeah, the two, the five, um, the four, the six train. Yeah. 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 Those were the um, um, the lines uh, that I would I would I would be on um, uh, because those are the lines that I would come in contact with, with mostly, and I would see most yeah. of the time. Um, again, there was there's this thing that's why the whole uh, benching factor came into play. Sure. Right. Um, as more or less as a social or community thing, with with the uh, um graph writing um, uh, uh, grassroots uh, phase two 
or was one of the ones that um, initiated that that um, meeting up point or center where okay all the writers the writing community we're going to meet here and we're going to um uh you know kick it really bobo here and make our plans here and also to watch the trains and to observe and monitor the trains here and that was 149th street and grand concourse uh, station on the downtown side towards the front of the train station. Uh, that was where the two and the five stopped at, right? Sure. Upstairs was the four train. So actually we could monitor um, three different lines right there. He stayed downstairs and watched the two and the five and went upstairs and seen the four. Yeah. All right? But um, there was also locations like at Hunts Point, uh, where you can go and see the number six train. I mean, at least for you know, for my uh, my crew members, we went we went to Hunts Point and seen the six train going back and forth at Hunts Point Station. Sure. Or or even long Hunts Point was a bigger station, but um, so but Longwood Avenue was our, our our home base station, right, for the Emily Do crew, but um. That that's the whole benching thing, right? I think is a is a major aspect of um, uh, community mm -hmm. in in in, uh, in the in the um, graph writing world, where the writers actually met up met up, and that's where the whole thing with the black books came into play too, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Now black books is a very important aspect of it, and I like it. Black books. Here, here's the thing with black books, right? Black books, you have a permanent record of your of your favorite writers yeah. uh, in, in in the book, right? You would go and you and you will meet your favorite writer. You know, you never seen him anywhere else right, on right. the train or, or tag somewhere, yeah, yeah. right? But now he's here, and it's like you know, it's like you know, you can get this starstruck thing, like wow, stay high one forty nine, yo, get in my book here, man, yeah, yeah, I got my yeah. book, and yo, and um. Yeah. Yo, Riff 170, yo, yeah. put, yo, put something in here. Yeah. And sometimes, if you know that the writer, you know, some writers, is like, they were very good, right? And they, they just didn't have time to just do a piece right there like that, right? You would, like, give them the book. Here, take that with you, and, you know, I'll see you back here tomorrow or something, you know? Oh. So they, yeah, so they, they had some, you know, and, and, that, and that's, you know, that's the thing, you know. You know, very few people, I believe, can produce a black book from the 70s. If, if you can produce those early black books from, those things are, are worth their weight in gold, man. Absolutely. Those, those books there, right? I've seen some amazing work in, in black. Black books is a very important aspect of the graph culture. And I remember when I did my, um, and it's just to go to show you how it's, how it's viewed. When I did my first uh, train pieces with characters, uh, people was, would say that I did a black book piece on the train. Mm. <laughs> You're doing black book pieces on the train, you know? Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know, like, you know, because it was, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't something that was a normal thing to, to draw. It was like you, you did your piece, the, your bevel letter font, and, you know, and that was it with the number, number, right? Bubble letter font and with, with your number, and that was it. The actual start drawing was something that was um, earlier on a uh, uh, regular, uh, you know, delegated for um, black books. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> I remember people saying, "Who well, you doing black book pieces on the train?" Right. And I, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So when you do your pieces on the train, would would other members of uh, of the crew help out with it, or or was it usually just no? Two? Okay, so here's the thing with that, right? Um. Uh, early on, that was a no yeah. because um. Remember, I said it, it, it was never really done before. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. That the inspiration to do that with um, uh, uh, for other members to participate because I'm doing something that is unique 
were, were graph writing at that point. Yeah. I'm doing something that's unique. They would come and see me doing the outline and they were like, like, what are you doing? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> that yeah, was yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> you know, you're drawing, you know? Yeah. And, and I said, yeah, this is my new way of doing it, right? Um, I was more or less um, one of the writers that would actually do outlines for some of the crew members. Mm -hmm. So I was a good, a big inspiration and like, yeah, do your letters like this or draw it like that or, you know, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Okay? So um, early on, no, I, I I would I was more I would more or less do my pieces myself. Wow. And so, but um, as head of a crew, I I felt the um, obligation uh, and responsibility to help out the crew members, um, even giving them graph names. Yeah. So, uh, crew members, I gave graph names, um, and actually did letter fonts for them. And you, okay, so you take over from, I just did the outline, you just go ahead and fill it in and fix it up the way you want to fix it up. Yeah. Right, just to get them moving. That's how, so basically a training, that's why, I, that's why I have so much fun doing what I'm doing now um, with, um, uh, with uh, like graph tours, where I work with, um, uh, doing um, workshops, teaching people how to do aerosol painting, you know? Yeah. So that's I, I always I always did that you know yeah. I always like you know I felt the uh, responsibility if there was a writer that was part of our unit right even the writers that weren't part because it was the whole thing with with the early writing thing to me it was a unifying force a, a, a youth culture a youth mo movement to bring um, uh, disenfranchised youth. Or, 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 or segregated youth communities together, you know? Yeah. That ordinarily we, we, we wouldn't um, have interpersonal communications with each other, but now we have a base thing now. We have a base thing, which is graph writing, right? Aerosol painting, you know, use of markers, putting our tags up, right? Um, racking paint, going on missions and, and this is a unifying thing right that bring all all these segregated youth communities together from uh, 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 racial to gang affiliation to, to uh, uh, I'm from the east side I'm from the west side I'm from you know nah we all come together you know and you know that rest is, is so phase two establish that writer's bench thing, yeah. right? And um, also, uh, there was a location at uh, right right near Clinton High School, right in the square, uh, where was the bagel shop was there. Sure. That was another uh, major location, I believe, that he had a hand in establishing, you know, God rest his soul, you know. Um, yeah, so, yeah, so that's, to me, you know, to me, I, I, I don't know how other people see it, but I see it a, 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 as a unifying youth movement that brought a lot of communities that were segregated together, you know, yeah. and dispelled a lot of, um, you know, uh, biases and prejudices and fears, you know, of yeah, these people it's coming together. It's not, you, you guys don't talk about race, so there's, there's white people. There's well, people. I mean, it, it's it's there. See, you see, in 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 this culture, and the culture in American culture is it's there. It's, it's all. It's always going to be there, but it was, it was uh, desynthesized oh. because we seen a, a, a um, camaraderie. Yeah, come on, <laughs> you know. I mean, I, I, and we made very light of it. Yeah. Oh, we made okay. very light of it. Yeah, and fa and, 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 uh, <laughs> right? so. we made very light of the <laughs> fact, that even though there was something that was going on in the news and <laughs> you know. Yeah. And it's all in different communities. It's like here we don't worry about that at all. And we don't make a big thing of that. Not at all. Oh pink. Yeah. Mm hmm So the women when did you start seeing women come on the scene? If you did. Well you know, early on. They were the women were from the beginning. Eva and Barbara and and, and, and Charmin and S Pat one sixty nine. 
or, or, those women were there from the beginning. It just wasn't a, a prevalent. Kivu was a was an early Ebony Duke member, you know. Um, um, those women were around. It's just that um, you gotta understand that that you had the um, uh, uh, the feminist movement, so it, it, in early seventies and stuff like that, right? And women were like, you know. Um, coming out and demanding that they had equal acknowledgments of their talents and abilities and, you know, and inputs into society. And just like anything else that was happening uh, at the time concerning women, right, the tag is, right, you know, had girlfriends and, uh, 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 um, girls that were on there in their neighborhood. Like I had girls in my neighborhood. It's like, what you're doing? Where you're going? Mm -hmm. right? Right, right, right. I'm going too. Oh, right? <laughs> right? And we kind of like try to, uh, 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 you know, um, discourage them from going because we kind of had the male show this view like, oh, no, no, no. You you know, you, you're a girl. You know? Yeah. You can't do this. You know? You, you know we're going to be going in the train tunnel. You, you can't go in the train tunnel, right? Yeah. He says, why not? I got two legs, right? To walk. <laughs> so it's like stuff like that. But we found that they, they women were just as useful to help with the whole process, especially with the, the uh, crew thing, mm -hmm. because, you know, they can they can do a diversion on a racket mission. It's like a guy and even better, you know, they go in and, and create a diversion in this part of the store while we over here. Rack, oh, they can, they can rack just as... Like Sharma, she was a good racker. <laughs> yeah. Oh wow! She was a good racker. I, 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 <laughs> she racked yeah. good. <laughs> Sharma, sixty-five. She, she got all the paint. Oh my god! <laughs> it's like wow. <laughs> Seemed like she had more places to put it at. So I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. wow. Wow, that's, that's just... So the I, I would say earlier on. There, there were your, some of you guys were getting noticed, right? So um, they formed the uh, Martinez from uh, Hugo Cal Martinez. Hugo Martinez, he formed from UGA. Him. Yeah, yeah. UGA. All right, so, see, okay, so. Are you still in the game at that time? Yeah, absolutely. He's a, he, um, um, the whole thing with UGA started early on in the Peace and Ever, right? It, it was formed early on in the Peace and Ever. When, um, uh, not so much a signature era, but mm -hmm. in, in the early peace in the era, um, um, we heard that there was this fellow that was around <coughs> that had started uh, a, a group uh, with uh, Taggis to come and to, um, to paint in a, in a structured formal setting. Mm -hmm. To come and do their graph writing in a structured formal setting. Now, uh, graph writing at that point is already structured in the sense that we have a meeting place, which is the writer's bench, and we have a network of writers that is grassroots, yeah. and we have protocol, mm -hmm. and, and we have hierarchy, which we had crews. Um, the Ebony Dukes and the Ex Vandals was was definitely an organized um, graph writing um, organize, organization. Yeah. Right. Um, again, all right. And this was is my take on the whole thing. It's basically the reality of it. It's it's that graph writing is a is an underground outlaw culture activity. Um, and anybody that wasn't a graph writer and part of that community, right, was considered uh, an outsider or part of the establishment. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And as um, um, protocol for being part of the Ebony Dukes, that you didn't. Uh, um, uh, 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 
collaborate or, or associate with people that were outside uh, uh, of, of the graph writing community. Because, <laughs> again, I, um, we came from the street gang culture. If you're part of a street gang, right, I'm not saying that it didn't happen and it wasn't documented, that street gangs weren't documented, you, you're not going to give every detail of what you do and how you do it because basically you're telling on yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're saying that this is the crime that I commit and this is how I commit the crime and these are the people I commit the crime with, right? And mm -hmm. so I let it be known as part of the Emily Dukes, listen, you, you can't associate with that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right? Because not only did... um. I was I aware of um, UGA. Uh, uh, no, no, um, graph people that did graffiti writing. I was aware from that community of people who was wanted for robberies and yeah, yeah, burglaries yeah. and drug selling mm -hmm. and even homicides. Yeah. In that, you know, so <laughs> how am I to to associate with someone that I didn't know exactly who their background was? Or if they were, it was a lot of things. See, you got to understand that, and that's one of my inspirations, right? Early on was was the militant organization. You had the young lords that was in the neighborhood, the young lords. Yeah. And my, my uh, a gang affiliation was the Ghetto Brothers who were like, um, they were militant, uh, um, they were militant street gang. They weren't the average outlaw street gang. They, they, they had a militant, um, tone to them and um so i was a little aware of what was going on you know politically and socially in in the community and in the world and um so black panther party had a safe house the you know, beck street and i knew people and i actually actually did things for them they sure they come here i want you to do this for me yeah yeah right so i'm aware of the whole revolutionary type of thing and the, the, and if you if you're familiar with Fort Apache, there was a hostility between the um, the 41st precinct, the police department, and that community at home. Absolutely. Right. So outsiders, outsiders meaning people who weren't actually tagging or part of that outlaw mm -hmm. uh, 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 grassroots community, were not welcome. To be collaborated or so so i was a big surprise to me to see uh major um writers of the time become associated with something that um they was given a name for and they was getting they was given um ultimatums for oh. other words his, his ultimate what really got me okay you guys are going to come over here in this studio and you're gonna start practicing your 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 tagging or graffiti graffiti art. Graffiti art, yeah. That that's the first time now, right? Right? Not with, well, well, not necessarily, but officially that I'm starting to hear the word graffiti art. Hmm. So, <coughs> United Graffiti Artists. Artist, yeah. Uh -huh, yeah, yeah. All yeah. right. Now, the only member of the Ebony Duke crew. That I could say that um, uh, I felt that became associated with that was Nova One. But everybody else knew, you know, no matter what their artistic ability was, not to associate it with it because even though you're getting promised that we're going to put you on canvas, we're going to put you in an exhibit, you're going to be part of this show. I'm gonna give you supplies to do your your, your art, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, um, you, we 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 couldn't associate with that because it's an outside establishment thing, right? Okay, that's the perspective Absolutely. that yeah, yeah. we had, and I believe that was a, a legitimate for what 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 graph writing was was yeah. underground outlaw movement, and then it moved into something else there. Can you see that? You understand what I'm saying, right? 
right? Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? That it moved from an underground outlaw movement to something that was being um, highlighted in an establishment in theater. Yeah. Right. And a uh, 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 um, uh, uh, an exhibit. Um. Um. In 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 media. Right, and pictures. Um, these are the the graph writers. Take a picture of them, right? Mm -hmm. That's been on the train vandalizing. All you guys get together. We're gonna take a picture of you, and we're gonna take this picture, and we're gonna put it in this publication. I mean, how? I mean, to me, to me, all right. That was like you know, um, anti graph at that point. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's something that, that's happened with every kind of outlaw youth movement. I mean, you look at rock and roll, it was co-opted and commercialized and all when it was extremely rebellious. Yeah. Now, so it's a, lot, a lot of people like, oh, you know, I mean, yeah, yes, yeah. Um, so a lot of people see that as progress. And if you're looking, if you're looking to be recognized in that, and, and it's, it's a bittersweet thing because I'm going to tell you the honest truth. Um, graph writers always looked had to some extent looked or, or had aspirations to be recognized like that yeah. because even though you had your tag on the train or on a wall or someplace like that if by random chance right that some um, media person took a picture or the television camera or some crime scene, or something happened someplace in New York, and your tag wound up on that on in, in that session on, on TV or something. That was a big thing in the writers' world. So in essence, you know, there was an aspiration for that to happen eventually, anyway. Yeah. Well, I think, right? you know, you had lost yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh lost did you see my tag in the Daily News? Oh, oh, that yeah, type yeah, of thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah it was yeah, always yeah. like that yeah. from yeah. early on. It was, well, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so. So, um, and that's just, to me, that's just that the disenfranchised, disenfranchised youth felt a need to be recognized. Yeah. That's, that's all that was. Yeah. But I, I, I always saw there was a limit to that. Mm -hmm. You know, okay, by chance you got in the daily news, right, but that, with your tag, your tag got it, but you, you, they don't know who you are. Yeah. That's just your tag. We know that's your tag, and we recognize you by chance you got in the daily news or on the seven o'clock news we saw your train go by and, uh, with, with a piece on it you know and that was like oh yeah at writer's corner everybody's giving you giving you high fives and young pounds and stuff like that you know and but that was between us yeah okay right that was between us that didn't go to the point where you know you identified who you was to 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 um the general public and they knew your name, your government name, and, and see who would you look like. And you didn't get an ultimatum. Here's, the, here's what really got me. The ultimatum for that was that in order to join this here UGA, you have to uh, swear off tagging. Oh, I didn't know that. Mm. Yep. <laughs> yeah. yeah, which is, uh, that I, I, know, I knew that from the beginning. Yeah. I knew that. See, we already had a, 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 um, a protocol to swear off tagging. And that was we aged out. Yeah. That's how you swear off tagging. You aged out. When you age out, right, then you swear off tagging. You don't, in the middle of your tagging um, uh, uh, um, activities, right, you know, get approached by an establishment person and this establishment person says from now on you are no longer a graffiti tagger you are a united graffiti artist the name change you start you stop from being a writer or a tagger and this is what what gets me from people who make a big thing of the word graffiti if you're making a big thing about the word graffiti why are you joining an organization that's calling you United Graffiti Artists. If you accepted 
membership into that. You accepted that name, United Graffiti Artists. That's why I don't make a big thing about the word graffiti now. Yeah. Because I already accepted the fact that if today and tomorrow I'm caught tagging and they put cuffs on me, uh, they, they're going to refer to me in court as a graffiti writer. Yeah. He, graffiti tagging. That's what I was doing. That's the crime. <laughs> so yeah. that's, you know, I understood that. Now, between us, I understand we're writers. And I'm not hoping that the rest of the establishment world refer to us as writers. Amongst us, we're writers. Yeah. And we accept the fact that we're writers. So I'm not forcing the establishment world to say, oh, I'm a writer. No. Writers to them are some people who, who publish books, books and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. for us, as as writers... As, as we put our tags up and you know so but it's 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 <laughs> I, I come from the beginning so I know <laughs> if people think I'll run yeah, that on me yeah, right yeah. and it's the same thing with the hip hop thing absolutely right yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I seen it and I lived it so I understand where it's coming from so <laughs> so you have people right you have people who who make a big thing about Oh, uh, graffiti writing or tagging, right? Graph writing, writing was before hip hop. It was before the actual label of hip hop, yes. But to me, it's one of the elements or aspects of the culture the youth movements that started happening in the late 60s, early 70s yeah. here in New York and in South Philly. Yeah. In the community or the neighborhood where I grew up in, all those activities, tagging, emceeing and DJing, and break dancing was part of the youth culture. Now, I understand in certain other communities some of those elements weren't happening, right? So in other communities, right, um, the music might have been rock and roll. And during that period, I was definitely a rock and roll fan and blues and soul, <laughs> yeah, you know? Yeah. That was my music, you know? And But I also was aware that there was what you call emceeing and DJing, which encompass soul, um and 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 and, and um uh, classic rock they use the beats in those musics right um to mix what you refer to as emceeing and DJing at that point but it's now rap music now yeah yeah yeah, yeah. you know so yeah but yeah. that's the history so, so, um, <laughs> what's What's uh, Blaine Comet's relationship with the Ebony Dukes? Or, or is there one? Yeah, yeah. So um, those are early members. See, uh, uh, most of them guys is, is is known as the Crazy Five now. Um, or or um, Fam and Crotchy and um, Death and those guys. But um, again, uh, tagging, uh, um, graffiti writing um, as a... Uh, um, a grassroots youth movement in 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 the um, early seventies was a unifying force for segregated neighborhoods. The the neighborhood that that those guys lived in, right up a Bronx, was was a um, generally an off off limits neighborhood for people who were from like the South Bronx and other places because number one um, gang affiliation and racial barriers. Yeah. Right um, now, even though Blade it, it is is African American in, in in appearance, obviously, right? Um, his 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 um, uh, his affiliation was with mostly a youth of European background, you know, Irish guys and Italian guys and stuff like that mm -hmm. in that community in, in the Upper Bronx. Above, above 180th Street, right, uh, um, uh, which goes up into White Plains Road, 
Um, so um, there was the incident with um, Death, one of the writers of the time from that area, right, inadvertently tagging or oh, uh, making a mark on, on my uh, canon piece, mm -hmm. right, which is one of the more prolific early um, concept character pieces of the time that appeared marked over, right? And um and and it was like who did that? You know, nobody knew and it was like it was that was the buzz, you know, because it was a very prolific piece and all of a sudden it it, it appeared like just with a like a mark through it, right? Um and so the word got back not from um the writers bench community, which those writers from uptown they never appeared at the writer's bench. There was, mm. yeah, there was, there was, that was a uh, disconnect um, at that point um, between those uptown writers who were mostly Caucasian and the um, the writers that were below 180th Street, right? You Not all of them, but a good majority of the writers that were below 180th Street were either Hispanic or African American yeah. that will appear at the uh, writer's bench, so um, we we didn't actually meet Blade and Comet and and um, uh, Death and Bam and Crotchy and those guys yet. Uh, um, I believe Comet was one of the ones that was early on to venture from there and make you know the trip further down into um below 180th street but um uh so the word got back it was one of the writers from up up uptown that did the crossing out of the of the canning piece which was death so um the thing was that well we got to go and you know and, and um deal with this see uh the whole thing um i show you the sense of community back then it's like someone's appearing on the line and death was getting up. He's when I say getting up his tag, you know, you know, um, was appearing regularly on the line. You know, he had a lot of pieces that were running on the two and the five train specifically. So uh, D E F? Huh? Uh, his name. The D, D E A T A. Like death, like someone's dying. Oh like death, death, death. Okay. Yeah. That tag. Uh um that was um in, in a straight letter style that was appearing regularly on, he did a lot of trains mm -hmm. real quick, right? And um, so he got up very quickly. So it wasn't that he didn't get around, he got around, yeah, yeah. right? Because of the, um, his tags on the train. So um, somehow it was, it, it came to um, the, the knowledge to us and the rest of the writing community that it was him that did it. All right, um, so we went up, I believe we had went to 180th Street beforehand and met a few of those writers because they used to conquer. That was their cutoff, uh, uh, that was amazing at that time. They cut off at 180th Street. They didn't go to Tremont and, wow. and, 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 and um, 175th and, and, and Freeman and Simpson. 180th Street, they stopped right there and they would go from there and uptown. That was their domain, right? Wow. So that's where we met them at, 180th Street. And um, yeah, so after that, you know, um, um, I they organized a, a meeting between um, myself and um, Death. And I actually went to his home, right? He, he invited me to his home. He, uh, he, I guess he didn't want to come to 180th Street. He says, I'm going to come there. Right? I got a crew of, uh, 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 of dudes who I guess he figured was all black dudes. It wasn't all black dudes. It was Hispanics. King Koo was original from Hewitt Place. He was a, a Hispanic person, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, um, so we went to his home in the valley, right? Which is definitely a, a, a off-limits area at the time while well, segregated. We went to his home in the valley and I found myself in the backyard with him 
and talking to him and his mother comes out and she has a tray with some refreshments on it and it's like wow <laughs> I, I didn't think it was gonna be so we got into a discussion he 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 he, 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 um, he expressed the regret that it happened it's, it made some um explanation that it was in the tunnel he didn't he couldn't see what it was and it, and it got inadvertently crossed out right i i accepted that yeah because that's what he's saying all right yeah, yeah, um, yeah. and um basically he made amends by saying i can give you some paint and uh, you know you know and i can help you paint it another one I, and uh, if i see it i will fix it up myself you know and um and that's what i think most people that the photograph most people see it is is that his um attempts to fix it but the pink the shocking pink that he uses is because it, the the bubble the the letter the letter font is in in a pink color a bright pink color and the pink that i use is lighter than the pink that he used to, to try to fix, fix it up and that's what you're seeing in the picture and so you can actually still see the cross out, right? but it's the um, it, it it it's the um, it's the thought or the motivation, the effort, the effort that I, I credit him for. Anyway, he becomes an Ebony Duke member. Wow. Right? So yeah, he becomes part of the Ebony Dukes and and Blade and Comet and then, and Van, all those guys. So. So what you know as a crazy five, they all the majority of those early members were were Emily Duke members before they became the crazy crazy five. Oh. Yeah. So. Wow. Yeah, that's, yeah. So. That's but cool. again, again, you know, that's the whole thing is that is that the whole culture, uh, 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 graph writing culture was a unifying youth movement. You know, uh, unifying, uh, um, the youth movement that um that I believe has changed into something else because of um, uh, the influence from from the outside uh, establishment, right? Now, not to say that things shouldn't progress or anything like that, which it should, absolutely. And, but I'm just saying that uh, uh, it affected the, um, the way that people approach and see graph writing yeah 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 mm -hmm. so yeah. what so what is the ebony juice today well okay uh i i more or less look at it as what it what it initially was right to some aspects which is uh, uh basically um the graffiti a graffiti crew right a graffiti club Right, a, a graffiti fraternity, graffiti writing fraternity, grassroots. Uh, but you have some aspects of it that I look at. It, it's like more, more or less a cultural guild. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, uh, basically to preserve the culture and the history of of what it was, right? And is. And you had new members or just? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Well, yeah. Um. So. Um. Uh, I'll say about maybe 10 years ago, almost now, um, uh, I gave uh, uh, membership to the first um, writer that is outside of the United States, which is um, Jimmy, who's also known as Paze, P-A-Z-E, from Denmark. So he became the first pioneer writer outside of the United States who became a member of the Ebony Dukes, GC. Wow. And and there's still a lot of, uh, maybe the underground elements are even stronger in some parts of Europe still, is that right? Or exactly. I would say, okay, see, I, um, you know, I would say that the um, the interest of, of, of its beginnings and culture it is, is a little more inspirational um, in, um, in foreign lands, and specifically Europe. Yeah, yeah, they're they're more interested because see they got it. You gotta understand that they got the culture, like almost like ten years later, sure, um, yeah, through yeah. through um, documentaries like uh, Style Wars, yeah, and uh, Wild Style and Beach Street, and more um, um, like publications like Subway Art, sure, 
that's that's how they learned of it. Yeah. Right. That's how they learned about the culture because they in and I hear, right. And um, so they got those pictures and images through those documentaries and publications, and that's how they started doing it there. All right. Um. So um. A lot of the the early my generation because it wasn't documented like that early on, right? Um, uh, didn't get documented, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and the majority of the documentation happened in beginning in the early 80s with, with people like uh, Jack Stewart and Martha Cooper and Henry Chavant and those people. But there is, uh, um, for my generation, an early publication that happened in 1974, which I didn't learn about to like, you know, um, <laughs> quite a few years ago, right? Uh, which is um, The Faith of Graffiti. That that book was published in 1974. So Norman every day, yeah, Norman Miller and Jean Noir, Noir, N A double A, N A double A R, N double A R. John Noir, J A O N N double A R. Uh, that's the name of the photographer. So he got all the pictures. Mm. And and Norman Mailer, the famous author, he did the um he did the uh, uh the text on it. Um and there's also um a segment of the Tonight Show with Johnny Carson, right? That uh, um, Norman Mailer is um, highlighting the book, the publication of the book. Oh, that's cool. Yep. Uh, the Faith of Graffiti. And John Narr did a remake of it uh, that he titled The Birth of Graffiti. So that's about the earliest of publications on the subject matter with pictures of, mm -hmm. you know, of the. Um, the more popular thing with the trains and the walls in, in New York City. Yeah. So, the two publications, Phase 2 was associated with um, uh, Underground Writing. Yeah. That was a book he yeah. did. Styles it, from the Underground. Styles from the Underground and IGT, International Graffiti Times. Yeah, that's later on he did that. That was not later yeah, on. Yeah, that's okay. much later on. That's the first, you know, that, that's... That, that's um, uh, uh, a publication that I, I hold in high regards too because it's the first publication that was done by an actual writer. Mm. The, the one that Faye still did, Styles from the Underground. Yeah, yeah. Right? So it's the perspective from an actual writer. Most yeah. of the other publications, right, that are, you know, popular, they're, they're from people, again, right, that are outside of the movement, right, that that's their perspective yeah. looking from the outside in, yeah, 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 right. Not to say that it's not legitimate, and it's but but the, it, it's legitimate in the sense that most of them are pictorials. Yeah, they ba they're based on the photographs that they that were taking. Right, yeah. right, right. Right. But and you don't get a sense of the wider culture just from no. The well, 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 that well, it's it's a secondhand um, perspective because they did interview a certain segment. Here's mm -hmm. the thing. Yeah, 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 and. That, you know, you have a lot of Brooklyn writers and Queens writers. They they, they they have a gripe with this that that they they only um they only went after or or interviewed or or, or documented certain segments of the culture and certain segments of the culture and the history was left out, which is legitimate to a certain aspect. All right? For instance, um, uh, you have this guy Keith Bog. Right, he's a, a um, an Englishman, right? That came around um, on vacation here in in, in um, New York in 1973, as early as 1973 he came around, and um, and then two years later he returned in 1975 on vacation from England, and this guy is an art teacher in England. And he had his camera with him, and a very good camera, you know, he's yeah. an art teacher, right? And he he was taken back by the appearance of 
the trains in the city. And he started taking pictures of the trains and which he brought back with him to his art students in England and showed them, right? Um, this is 75 in the latest, right? And there was no, um, there was no big thing with it at that time. Remember, it wasn't a big documented thing at that point. So he just took pictures, right? And he just put them away in his eye. He just showed him, look, this is what's happening in New York. All these images on the trains and stuff. It look, looks very artistic. I guess he should use it as a show and tell in, in his art classes. And uh, he just put it away in his attic or wherever he had them at. And then quite a few years ago, um, he appeared, you now, you know, graph writing becomes his art form and you have exhibits and stuff. He goes to his exhibit and you have graph writers, right? And I guess this is one of his first graffiti art exhibits that he's appearing at as an artist. He's an artist himself and an art teacher. And he appears at this graffiti writing exhibit, right? A graffiti art exhibit. Graffiti art to me is different from graffiti writing, yeah. right? And, um, you know, and some of the um, prolific at that point, uh, graffiti writers in in uh, England, Great Britain, is uh, there, and he's talking to them, and they tell him, "Oh, this is all what you see here. The the main proponents of this come from New York, and from the '70s, and, and you know, and those writers there are the early pioneers of what you see here, and stuff like that." And he's, they're telling him this, and he says, oh, I got pictures of that stuff. And they couldn't believe him. Yeah. They, they said, nah, no, he couldn't. Nah. <laughs> yeah, and he says, I, 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 I got pictures of that stuff. And, and he basically went and, uh, and um, brought out the pictures that we had him stored at, and that's where you get that book. That he had, he produced. I think. Yeah, yeah. He just did a promo a couple of months ago. He just yeah. he updated it. He just released a, a new one. Yeah. Collectible. One. Revised it. Yeah. Revised it. Yeah. 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 Wow. yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's 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 a lot. It's a lot that uh, has transpired over the years. Yeah. Any more, any more questions? Uh, you, you go ahead, Kurt. No, I'm good. You good? Yeah, I'm good. I think uh, I yeah. So, uh, one question I have for you, which I think you've um, already answered in a few various ways already, but just to concentrate on it, um, what what are your thoughts on kind of the, the global spread of, of graffiti at, at this point in time? Where do you see, where do you see it right, right now? Where do you... Uh, I, I see it, I, 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 I admire it. You know, I mean, yeah. what could I say? You know, um, it's, it's more than I even, even, even imagined to happen, see, you gotta understand the early, early um, proponents of this uh, the, from the from the signature era. To you gotta understand that what it was intended to be was just that something that was going to be an underground street art, not street art, but the street writing um, um, movement, youth movement. Yeah youth movement to put your tag around and the frequency of your tag around the city gave you this uh, 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 street credibility yeah. street level credibility and that's basically all I saw that as at that point now what it has progressed to is just a very in interesting fact of, uh, of of the history of it you know yeah 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 you know Absolutely. but I, I, the main thing that uh, that my thing is 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 to acknowledge that what it is, what it was, Absolutely. and what it is at, or has become. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it's two different things. Sure. Absolutely. It is two different things, right? So, um, when somebody says, "Oh, I'm a writer," and I, I want, <laughs> and I, I like to, uh, I like them to, to 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 define what they mean by what do you mean as a writer? Yeah. Because what I know to be a writer, and what some other people. Uh, assumed to be a writer is two different things, Absolutely. right? And from that first generation, if, if you're not if you're not following the um, the protocol of a Tacky 183 or a Joe 182, right? You know, 
uh, uh, then um then how you know wh- how do you identify yourself as a writer yeah 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 i just gotta change so, so how do you feel about going in the bronx and uh, the activities that you did as a youth today have become this cultural phenomenon from street art to, to the hip hop to breaking what you guys did for fun and hanging in the park is now a cultural phenomenon that come out of the Bronx. So how, and you were part of that. So how do you feel about that cultural explosion coming from your neighborhood? Um. Oh. Oh. Well. I, well. Okay. Um. There's there's two aspects of it. Um. Just the environment that I grew up in, in the Fort Apache uh, uh, section of the South Bronx is interwoven with that, that fact that you just mentioned. And um, even though um, uh, um, this whole youth movement came out of it, the the, uh, graffiti art and the and emceeing and DJing, which you now know is rap music and the break dancing and all that, right? Um, uh, there's there's also the, the negative experience of, of, of Fort Apache as well yeah. that's attached to that, right? And the resulting effects uh, upon not only my life, but my 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 brother AJ's life, yeah. who who's 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 still incarcerated to this day, mm. right? And the uh, the, um, some family members that are actually lost to uh, to um, the actually I have a brother that was killed through gun violence, my brother Daniel, right? Oh. Um, um, the infant mortality rate that was in um, that section of the Bronx, right? Um, um, I had lost a, a sister, right? Uh, as an infant, she was an infant. She, she was not, but well, only a few months old, if that, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, when she uh, passed away inadvertently, um, um, right there um, in that tenement apartment on Hewitt Place. Um, so there's there's things that's attached to it that's that's not so uh, uh, um, pleasant as far as uh, uh, to remember. But um, the, the the fact that it, it be you know from that that you know that dread that that unfortunate experiences that were in that part of the the, the Bronx, this whole uh, culture came out of it, right? That is, uh, uh, um, and the whole thing is is this, right? Is and I I look at graph writing as a voice for the voiceless, you know, and not only this, the modern version of it with the aerosol and the markers, I mean, this in general, in general, people uh, from the beginning of time use war writings and, and um, uh, uh, markings in, in the public form to express themselves when they had no other way to, mm-hmm. right? And, um, and, I see that as a very rewarding uh, uh, factor, me being an early proponent of that and so forth. So yeah, <laughs> and where it's, where it's went to. So it's, um, you know, I did make some points about, you know, uh, uh, anti-establishment uh, uh, and such like that. But, you know, to me, it is what it is, right? Yeah. Things, things progress, you know. Uh, in order uh, for change to happen, you know, things have to change, right? And um, um, and some things will remain the same. And I believe that that um, uh, tagging, the grassroots thing of tagging, will always be. You know, yeah. I was here, but now I'm going. I left my name to carry on. Yeah. Right. And um, the messages that ensue from that. Because and uh, the um what we now know as street street art, right, is a continuation of that because um street art it, it, uh, one of its main proponents or use of, of 
doing it or mediums are doing it is aerosol, right? And um, I feel um, uh, somewhat um, grateful to be a part of, of the early use of it, you know? And if for the carry on to the, because some of the can control today is amazing, mm -hmm. right? And, that's, and that has to do with people who have formal training and so forth, and they just adopted the aerosol to, to uh, along with their formal training to create these 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 amazing masterpieces that you see in, in in the world today, you know. So me being an early proponent of that, that's like wow, you know. Yeah. And I had a hand in and, and, yeah. and doing some of the first sketchings with aerosol, you know. So absolutely, absolutely. Wow. So it, yeah, it's it, it's it can be bittersweet, but it's it's also all inspiring. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you so much, that beautiful. Thank you so much for, for this interview. Absolutely. You're Thank welcome. you so much.